This video will give an example of how to use enthalpy during a physical process and show how enthalpy is distinct from internal energy. So what we're going to look at is we're going to say that we have at one atmosphere of pressure the vaporization temperature or the boiling temperature of liquid nitrogen gas or sorry liquid nitrogen is equal to minus 195.8 degrees Celsius. The density of liquid nitrogen at this temperature is equal to 0 0.808 grams per milliliter. And the heat that occurs that is absorbed by the gas during vaporization is equal to 5.56 kilojoules per mole. So our question is, what is the change in molar internal energy that occurs during this phase transition? So a lot of these things that I discussed in the setup to this question we'll discuss in greater detail further down the line in this playlist, but this is just an example to get you uh, familiar with the difference between enthalpy and internal energy. Okay, so I have this bar over here over internal energy. So U bar, that's just the internal energy divided by the number of moles. So the energy per mole of particles. So that works the same for any particle. So molar volume, molar internal energy, molar enthalpy, all just the quantity divided by N. So the enthalpy change, uh, the molar enthalpy change of vaporization, since the molar enthalpy equals uh, enthalpy equals internal energy plus pressure times volume. So molar enthalpy equals molar internal energy plus pressure times molar volume. Uh, the pressure is already an, an intensive function. So the molar enthalpy change of vaporization is equal to the molar internal energy change of vaporization plus pressure times the molar volume change of vaporization which is equal to, as we showed in the previous video, the amount of heat absorbed during a constant pressure process, which in defined in the setup is 5.56 kilojoules per mole. Okay, so our change in molar volume during vaporization is the molar volume of the gas minus the molar volume of the liquid. So the molar volume of the liquid is one over the density, Molar volume is the inverse of the density. So that is, uh, we have one milliliter per 0 0.808 grams of N2. We need to convert the grams of N2 into moles of N2. So we have 14.02 grams of N2 is one mole of N2. We have one milliliter is one cubic centimeter. And 100, cub 100 centimeters quantity cubed is one meter quantity cubed. So this gives us that the molar volume of the liquid is 1.24 times 10 to the minus 6 meters cubed per mole. The molar volume of the gas we get from the ideal gas law, P V bar equals RT. So V bar equals RT over P. So we have 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin for R. The temperature we need to convert into Kelvin so minus 195.8 Celsius plus 273.15 gets us to Kelvin. Divided by a pressure of one atmosphere, which is 101,325 pascals per atmosphere. So if we're using R in joules per mole Kelvin, that's an SI unit. Then we need to use pressure in SI units as well, which would be pascals. 101,325 101, pascals per atmosphere. This gives us a molar volume of our gas of 6.35 times 10 to the minus third meters cubed per mole. That's the SI unit for volume as well. Okay, so we notice here that our molar volume for our gas is much, much bigger than that for our liquid. So we have about uh, three orders of magnitude or about a thousand times higher molar volume for the gas. The liquid is about a thousand times more dense than the gas as is to be expected. Gas is typically very dilute compared to such a condensed phase. So the change in molar volume during vaporization is volume of gas minus volume of liquid, 6.35 times 10 to the minus 3 minus 1.24 times 10 to the minus 6 meters cubed per mole, which at the number of significant figures that I've give, given, which is 3 for the most part, ends up being the same number. It's 6.35 times 10 to the minus 3 meters cubed per mole. 
Okay, so the pressure times the molar volume change of vaporization is 101,325 pascals, or one atmosphere, wherever that is, there it is, times 6.35 times 10 to the minus 3 meters cubed per mole, <clears throat> times 1 kilojoule uh, per 1,000 joules, gives us 0 0.643 kilojoules per mole. So our molar uh, internal energy change of vaporization equals delta vap h bar minus p delta vap v bar. So that's 5.56 kilojoules per mole minus 6 0 0.643 kilojoules per mole is 4.92 kilojoules per mole. So the change in internal energy of our nitrogen as it goes from liquid to gas at one atmosphere and minus 195.8 degrees Celsius is 4.92 kilojoules per mole. The system increases its energy by 4.92 kilojoules per mole. So we know that the enthalpy is equal to the heat that occurs during this process that was 5.56 kilojoules per mole. So what happens to the intervening minus 0 0.643 kilojoules per mole? So we know the internal energy change is equal to the heat plus the work. So that remaining energy is the work which was done. At constant pressure, the work is minus P delta V. So that was this term up here. The work of vaporization is minus 0 0.643 kilojoules per mole. The nitrogen get, had to do work against this external pressure of one atmosphere in order to become gas. That nitrogen gas had to physically push the atmosphere away and do work on it in order to become gas. So it did work on the surroundings in order to vaporize, and that decreased the total energy that it absorbed by about 10% or so during that vaporization process.